What's up everyone, it's a knife saw here and today I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Spyderco Military and the Spyderco PM2. And so these knives, I don't think that they would be very fitting for my usual Battle of the Blades setup. My, uh, I will be following the same uh, sheet that I go by when I do those videos, but I don't think that they would be very good just because they're the same brand, they're kind of different knives. I just want to see how they compare, and I think that this will be a really fun video. So I just want to say this Millie was provided to me by Idea315. A link to his Instagram will be in the description, and he sent me this knife out for review, so I figured I'd make a video comparing these two knives because I won't have this knife forever. And so, um, oh, and some, this is the Bento Box Shop exclusive, and he added a sharpening choil here. And the lanyard hole was later CQ'd by Spyderco, I guess you could say that, to make it a little bit bigger because I don't think that that could fit 550 paracord at all. And this was tapped for tip up, but I am just leaving this tip down normal like a stock military. And this PM2 is mine. It's the S35EN1. I believe this was a Blade HQ exclusive, but they usually get some here and there. And S30V and S35EN are very close. So anyway... Uh, I think that the, let's compare the specs of this. So the PM2 has an overall length of 8.28 inches with a blade length of 3.44 inches and a weight of 3.75 ounces. The Millie has an overall length of 9.5 inches with a, with a blade length of 4 inches and a weight of 4.2 ounces. So both of these are very good weights for the size of the blade, but 4.2 ounces for a 9.5 overall inch knife is crazy and it's just super light for how big it is and i don't even understand it a lot of your average titanium frame locks are over that four and a half ounce mark usually they get they get into the five ounce mark when there's milling it changes but anyway this is a lot lighter than a lot of titanium frame locks that are around the same size of it so i think that that is really cool and the pm2 is also a good ounce to inch ratio but i don't really care about that i just wanted to point it out but that both these knives I do a really good job with that. So the design of these knives, this design was made for a more hard use, tactical, maybe combat situation. That's probably why it's called the military. But anyway, it sits to down carry. That's going to be a turn off for a lot of people. So basically, the reason that I think tip down is good for this knife is because when you pull it out of your pocket, you pull it out and your thumb is right there, ready to go. If this was tip up carry, you'd have it in your pocket, you'd pull it out, and you'd pull it out and your hand would be right here. You would maybe just, you could maybe just reach and then you just basically have to wiggle your way all the way up this whole knife in order to open it. If this was tip up carry and this PM2 was just supposed to be an EDC knife, just smaller than the military. And it's an overall good EDC knife that can be used a little bit more for hard use than your average EDC knife. But anyway, on to the fit and finish of these knives. So quick centering check. The Millie is just a tad bit off center, but it's overall for really good. No rubbing or anything. And this one is dead centered. And the lock up at these for the locking mechanism. PM2 uses a compression lock. The Millie uses a liner lock. And so uh, the Millie has no up and down. And you can, if I hold it down here and get a good grip right here, yes, I can wiggle out some side to side, but I can also do the same with the PM2, and I can do that for almost every knife, unless it's like a Sabenza or something. It's just, uh, a lot of people are, I'm not gonna be doing any, um, what, what would you call it, horizontal force this way, like prying or anything with these knives, which I think that they could be okay at them, but anyway, I don't think they'd be that good for prying. I'm not going to use them for prying. So horizontal blade play does not really matter to me at all. I've carried knives and used them like this pair of three lightweight with a lot more horizontal blade play. This one's because it's only got one washer in it. But basically what I'm trying to say is I don't think, I think that it's unreasonable to call a knife saying it has blade play when you can wiggle some out when you just use all your strength and you're doing like that. Like it's still a very strong lockup. And so yeah, both the locking mechanisms are good, but truthfully, I like the Millie's liner lock a lot more. This is the strongest liner lock and the best liner lock I've ever handled. The lockup I would say is about 35 to 40%, kind of like that. And it's just extremely secure. And I would trust this lock for hard use. A lot of people kind of write off um, liner locks for hard use just because they think of these little budget rinky dink liner locks. 
that have a ton of blade play that you see there. And so I see why they do that, but this could definitely be hard use. And this compression lock, it's also good here. No complaints here. I haven't adjusted this pivot at all. I've had this knife maybe a couple of years. I don't really know, but it's still very smooth. It, it's not a complete drop shut to where it like bounces at the end, but it is still a very good compression lock. But I personally like this liner lock more. A lot of people are gonna get really upset about that. But I just think that this is the best liner lock I've ever felt. And I'm wondering where this liner lock went. Why Spyderco has not used this more. It's just overall very nice. You know, it gives good lock bar access without hindering the ergonomics. And this little bit of jimping right here, it is, doesn't do much. But it does provide a tiny bit of grip. And it won't tear up your finger when you're just closing it. Now, it probably might catch. Yeah, I caught a little bit of fingernail when I just rub my fingernail on it, but you do not feel that when you're holding it in your hand. And so overall, this is the best liner lock I've ever felt. And no uh, bashes to the compression lock because it's done very well on the PM2, but I'd just rather see the liner lock and it makes me confused where this liner lock went when Spyderco is coming out with more, more new models. So comparing these blades, uh, they all vary in different blade steels, and I'm not really going to be comparing that. This one's S90V, this one's S35BN, and so whichever steel you like, you can get, I guess. But both these knives are very good. I believe this one's about 19 thousandths beyond the edge. I haven't measured my PM2. Let me go ahead and do that on camera. Sorry if this takes a while. Sometimes I'm not very good at it, and I get a little bit shaky on camera. So I got it touched there. What? Does that say 17 thousandths? Okay, that's gotta be wrong because this thing's like 22 thousandths. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's a better measurement, 20 thousandths, but maybe in a spot it is 17 thousandths. I don't know, that could be an issue with my calipers, but I've always measured this thing at around that 20 thousandths mark. And I did a side-by-side -side cut test comparison, just cutting cardboard, and the military did a lot better than that, but that could very well be because his edge was better than mine. But anyway, let's get a quick edge test here. Hopefully I don't expose myself and just drop this knife. So hopefully it's back to a good edge. But yes, yeah, so this is my edge here. Okay, that's okay. Pretty good edge. Not my best, but here's his edge. Oh no, that's way better than mine. Oh yeah, his edge is much better than mine. Mine cannot do that good, but it's still like an 800 grit working edge. His is brought to a higher polish, so that'll be my excuse for his edge being better than mine. But so, but they were too close, so the military actually did cut the cardboard better. So both of them had good edges, just the millies. Uh, Millie just maybe it has a longer blade shape, which makes it easier. Maybe it feels better in hand, so I was putting more force when I was cutting it. There are whole different variables to the situation, but I will say that the Millie cut better. And the Millie, I said this in my review, but if I had the whole pile of cardboard that needed to uh, break down to go in the recycling or something, I would take the Millie and do it with that, just because I think it is one of the best knives for that. Obviously, I try and test out a knife I was trying to film for review, but anyway, the military would be such a good user and just a cardboard eater in general. So anyway, for the carry of these knives, ooh, this is about to get interesting. And the carry, just think of this as the stock clip. This was a really old knife, so I kind of stripped the screws on the clip, so I can't take this clip off, or I probably could, I just don't want to deal with it. And I think that the stock clip on the PM2 works just as well. I don't even know why I got this for it. But anyway, the PM2 has a better carry, obviously. It's going to appeal to more people, because the people who like to carry tip down can carry it tip, tip down. People who like to carry it tip up can do that. And the tip down carry on the Millie, I don't think that... I don't think it's an issue because I've done multiple takes in this video, so I don't know if I've said this already or not. But anyway, when you pull it out of your pocket, you pull it out and your hand is right there, ready to go and ready to open the knife. And so, yeah, it's just like that. But if this was tipped down, you'd have to pull it out and then inch your way all the way up this blade and then flick it out. And for a combat first responder not made knife, that won't really be an option. But when you pull out the PM2, I guess like that, your hand's right here, and so it's really just a little crawl up, and then you're good to go. But the carry on the PM2 is overall better because you do have a big hunk hanging out of your pocket. But don't get me wrong, this knife is 4.2 ounces. For how big it is, this carries very, very nicely. It's a big knife that carries like a small knife, in my opinion, and this would be perfect for back pocket carry, maybe strapped to like a 
tactical vest. Uh, I don't really know, but a back pocket carry, that knife would be up against the seam of your back pocket, and it honestly do really good. It can carry in front in your front pocket just as well. So do what you want with it. But I think that both the, these carries are fine, but the PM2s is definitely better. So on to the ease of disassembly, I guess you could say. I think that the military would be easier to disassemble. This is a T15 pivot, T6 body screws. I didn't take this apart, but it does have this dreaded lanyard barrel here, but it is not attached, attached to any liners. So I think that it might just fall off. I don't really know, but there's no um, wiggle to it. So it might be kind of press fit in there. I'm not entirely sure, but overall it seems like a fine knife to take apart liner locks for me are a lot more simple than compression locks they're both decently easy but this this dreaded lanyard barrel on this pm2 really makes a whole lot of people rage for that reason i've never taken this part of knife taking this knife apart and i do not plan a plan on it so on to the ergonomics of this and this is a big part where the milli just blows the pm2 out of the water and the the PM2, the ergonomics right here for light EDC tasks is completely fine. Now, when I choke back, I don't like it as much because this little hump right here. Sometimes if I'm gripping it more with my fingertips than the meat of my hand, I do get a hot spot on there. If I do the meat of my hand, yeah, it's completely fine. The jimping is a little bit sharp on this. And it is a little bit sharp on the milli, but I don't notice it all that much. Don't really know why. The jimping is a little bit less on the milli, as you can see here. So there's the paramilitary too. So that whole jimping's on your thumb, but this one, the jimping goes up like that and it still feels very nice. And basically just in the choke back grip, the milli is a whole lot better because this one is also fine in a hammer grip, but in a saber grip, I sometimes get some hot spots here and there. And this back is curved, but so is the millies. And so when you are doing hard use and you're putting pressure or when whatever you're cutting is putting pressure on your knife, it will bring this knife back and these certain spots that are touching your hand will provide a little bit of a hot spot. And the ergos on the milli really surprised me so much. Like, I don't even know how my hand can just rest entirely on this pocket clip and I can get no hot spots at all. Like, I just don't understand that. It works in so many different grips and it works very well. My favorite that I'd use the most is probably this grip. Also, this pinch grip right here. Yeah, that feels super good and I feel like I could really do some work with that. And especially if I was going to do some hard use, like really hard use stuff, I'd grip it back here, really have a long distance from me and the blade, and it's still, you really do have a very good grip on this. So the ergonomics on the milli are very nice. And for such a big knife, and my hands are a little bit on the smaller side, my fingers are a little bit thinner than the average person's, and it looks kind of funny if I cram all my fingers together. Like, that looks almost dumb. I can almost two hand this knife and so yeah it's just the ergonomics on the milli really surprised me the pm2 ones are okay in the choked up position both of them i wish the jimping was a little less sharp but yeah ergonomics goes to the milli and also another note look at this chamfering on the pm2 it's almost non-existent there's just a little bit of a thing keeping it from just being solid g10 just a solid g10 slab which it pretty much is it's just a little tiny chamfer probably just like a millimeter in length now the milli look at the chamfers on this thing that is much better and it really you can just really tell if both of these were contoured that would be even more amazing but yeah the attention to detail on the milli is a lot better than, P than the pm2 a lot of people say the pm2 scales are blocky i would agree with that and i don't think the that the milli scales are blocky because of that chamfering so that's a really nice thing and i wish that they would have brought the same machini machining over to the PM2, I think it would have made the ergonomics a whole lot better. So on for the action of these knives. So this has the compression lock fun action, and it is very good. You can spidey flick it like that. You can thumb flick it like that. Thumb roll it. You can, hopefully I don't hit my camera here. You can, I'll just do this off camera. You can do the spidey drop like I just did. You can do the same things with the military for the opening. So you can thumb flick it. You can spidey flick it like that. You do kind of have to put some wrist into it because it's a big blade, but both of these, if I just pulled it out in an EDC setting, I just hit it with a thumb roll. I think that Spider Co's the thumb hole is really good for just a basic thumb roll. That's why I like the thumb hole and the th thumb studs on knives are also good for a thumb roll. Who I'm tired of saying the word thumb. But anyway, both the actions are good. This is the closing action. 
on the milli and let's get it here it is it really just drops but it doesn't drop after you stop putting uh after you stop disengaging the lock bar i don't i guess that's just the detent ball putting pressure on the uh detent trail or detent path or whatever but i'm not entirely sure the pm2 it is a better action with this compression lock so i will give the action of the pm2 now if you guys know me you know i don't care all that much about action but they both have great actions and the compression lock is a little bit more fun to play with i will admit i have opened and closed this knife many many times in my days so anyway for the attention to detail on these knives I think that that is 100% going to go to the military because of this chamfering here. And this lanyard hole was smaller, but they made it bigger. And so all the pair of three fans cry when they see this lanyard hole, I guess. But yeah, the chamfering here is really, really nice. And I like that. And I think that that attention to detail is really what sets it apart. Also, this backspacer is completely flush. You, there's no protruding or anything. And it feels very smooth doesn't really even feel like any voids at all so that is a very nice thing pm2 don't get me wrong it's not like a flawed knife and design it just it it seems like two g10 slabs and a piece of steel and that is almost every knife out there but it just seems like i i wish that a little bit more contouring would go into this just a little bit more attention to detail would go into the pm2 but don't get me wrong the pm2 it's not terrible like that. The Millie is just better with the attention to detail. So for the value, this one's about 150-ish. This one's about 200-ish at the base price. Now, keep in mind, the Millie is about an inch and a quarter la larger than the Paramilitary 2. Now, would that increase the price by 40 or $50? Eh, I don't really know. But I think that I, if I had to buy one of these again, I'd personally go with the Millie because I like it a lot more. I like the size of it more, I like the blade of it more, I like the ergonomics of it a lot more, and I, the things that I care about in knives the most are edge geometry and um, ergonomics. I keep saying that, I'm going to keep saying that, the edge geometry is pretty good. This thing was like 11, 12 thousandths behind the edge, like I did the cut test and I threw in the Savivi shredder, and this thing is very thin behind the edge, and it just absolutely destroyed them. But yeah, if Spyderco just ground their things a lot thinner, man, they would be such better cutters. A lot of people already love Spydercos and say how nice and slicey they are, but I don't think that people have tried the Microtech LUDT that sits at about nine thousandths behind the edge. That thing just absolutely destroys. I don't have it with me because, surprise, surprise, the spring broke on it, just like everyone's LUDT, so that's frustrating about it. But anyway, the edge geometry is overall decent on this knife. It's a very good and usable blade, and the ergonomics are much better with that contouring and basically just how many grips you can do this without that pocket clip, even providing a little bit of a hot spot. So yeah, overall, I would take the military. I think that the military is better than the PM2. And so, yeah, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you are a PM2 fanboy, I'm really sorry about this video, but I think that I don't think I was too mean to the PM2. You know, when I compared the PM2 to the Ho Gritter, I was a little bit mean to it. I kind of bashed that thing into the ground. But anyway, thanks for watching. We hit 500 subs. I don't know when this video is going to go up, but don't forget to like and subscribe. One more cut test, but I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, that was kind of a fail. Bye.